Hi! In this video demonstration, we're going to show you how to make an object follow a spline-based path, a uh, path of your creation, your shape, uh, anything you want. Uh, the object will follow it all the way through to the end. In our case, we're going to do something simple, uh, kind of an example of uh, perhaps the Earth uh, revolving around the Sun here. So let's create a sphere. And this sphere, uh, I'll go ahead and make it about uh, 30 radius. And uh, rather than, you know, you can texture these things later, but I'm just going to change the color here to something a little bit more in the orange spectrum because we're going to call this one our sun. I'm going to select the sun here, and just to make sure that it's in the center of the 3D universe here, uh, just to mimic our own, I'm going to select it, get my move tool, and come down here to the uh, coordinates, uh, X, Y, and Z, and right-click on these little guys uh, on all those arrows, and it'll center everything out to 0, 0, 0 in the universe. I'm going to hold down shift with my move tool and uh, create a copy. The copy, I'll go ahead and give it a new name. We'll call it Earth. We'll change Earth's color from orange to blue. And we'll go over to the Modify tab and reduce the radius to something quite a bit smaller because uh, while this still isn't even close to scale, it'd be a speck, uh, we still want to be able to follow it. So uh, give it a radius of 5 and we'll call that one pretty good. Now that we've got an object, uh, and an object to follow around the other object, we need a path. Uh, we're going to use splines to create this path. So back on our Create tab, uh, next door to the Geometry button, we've got our Shapes button. Uh, know that any shape will work, uh, including one that you draw and define yourself, uh, from spiral shapes to specific pathing on down. We're going to go ahead and use a circle in this case, because we want this, the uh, object to follow around uh, 360 degrees around this object. I'm going to go ahead and create a circle. I'll create it in my top view since uh, you know drawing splines in the perspective view is probably not a good idea. Uh, I'll create this circle uh, as close as I can to between the Sun and the Earth. Uh, then I can get my move tool and with that circle selected I can still right click down here on these coordinates and make sure that it's at uh, 0, 0, 0. If I go ahead and select my uh, planet Earth here, uh, I notice that it's negative 158.35 from the center. Uh, it might be a good idea just to round that out, negative 160. And that'll also allow me to uh, define exactly how far away from my sun I want it to be traveling as well. So if I select that circle, go to the Modify tab there, I can put in a radius of 160 exactly, and it'll, it'll be exactly between the center of our world and our planet Earth here. Uh, our circle is a little bit jagged, so if you want to, you can you can change the interpolation mode to adaptive, and it'll be a nice smooth circle. Probably not 100% necessary. It depends on what you're doing and how uh, accurate you want this thing. Uh, and then we're ready to assign our Earth to follow the path. Uh, right now, we've got no animation whatsoever going. So if I select my planet Earth, uh, first I'll show you the where this path constraint is is truly located, and then I'll show you kind of a shortcut how to add one of these path constraints uh, a little quicker. But just I want you to know where this is at so that you can uh, add or remove it in the future, as well as some other great constraints, uh, like let's say audio controllers or look at constraints and some other stuff. We're going to move over to, since this has to do with animation, to our movement tab. So one, two, three, the fourth one in. Uh, it looks like a little tire or a wheel kind of going in one direction. That's our movement tab, where, where animation uh, value changes take place. Inside here, you should have an assign controller rollout. Hit the plus sign and open it up if it wasn't open already. Uh, you'll have your transforms. Transform is any way you can manip manipulate an object from the position of the object, the rotation of the object, or the scale of the object. If we select the position, we can add a constraint since that's how we want this planet to travel. We want to change its position based on the path that we've created. So select position, Go ahead and hit that Assign Controller button, and from the list, you'll find that uh, Positive XYZ is already selected. That'll come in handy if you want to remove this later on. But there's also one called a Path Constraint. Go ahead and select that and hit OK. You'll notice that two keyframes key have been created for you down here on the timeline. However, if you scrub between them, nothing's going on, because we have to tell our planet which path to follow. Uh, once you've added the path constraint, you'll notice it now says path constraint next to the position here. You'll also have these path parameters down here, and you can click the add path button and then select the path that you've created.
It'll jump to wherever it believes the beginning of your path is, uh, depending on whether or not you drew one that's got uh, two ends or one that never ends, like we have here. Uh, it's decided that, uh, you know, kind of off to the right-hand side of our sun is where the path begins, but it is animating all the way around that path circle. Uh, if we hit play and we let it go all the way around, you'll notice that it kind of loops continuously and forever, which is kind of good, uh, taking our subject matter into account here. What if we don't want it to start here, but instead start where we kind of had it in the first place? Well, turn on your auto key, and down when you hover over on your slider over that first keyframe, uh, you'll want to change this value over here, the percentage along path. Uh, a negative, let's say, 25, not 2.5, negative 25% should put it right back to where we were. You know, minus 25% of the way around was right back to where we had started. Now, if we wanted to travel 100% all the way around, we're going to have to also move that to the end, frame 100, where the second keyframe is, and step that one back as well. Right now, it's at 100%. We want to move it to about 75%, because between negative 25 and 75 is 100%. And now, it'll follow along the path starting from where we wanted it to in the first place. You can check the follow box and the bank box if you want a an object other than a sphere to kind of follow. Uh, let's say you're doing a fighter jet instead of a planet. Uh, you can check the bank box and it will kind of uh, lean inward as it curves and bends and, and changes direction. Uh, and it will follow along whatever path you've set. So that, that comes in real handy if you want that. It also kind of comes in handy just to set this because it kind of tilts our earth at the axis that it uh, kind of is anyway. You have control over the bank amount. In other words, which direction you want it to go. And you've also got control over how smooth of a change that takes. Uh, higher is going to be less obvious and lower will be more extreme. You can allow it to go upside down. You can uncheck constant velocity if you want it to speed up or slow down. You can tell it not to loop, uh, etc., as well as change the axis as to which it is following along. In other words, our planet here will go from north to south pole and race around the line that way. So that'll really help if you've got, again, another shaped object rather than just a sphere where it doesn't truly matter all that much. Okay, there we go. There we have our... our planet revolving around the sun. In order to remove this, we have to come back up here to our position where we added that path constraint, select that position again, and click the Assign Controller button, and we've got to change it back to position XYZ. Then no longer will it follow the path, and we have full control to push it, pull it, and change it wherever it is uh, as we like. I promised I'd show you another way to add this path constraint now that we're back to where we started. Uh, you can also come up to the Animation menu, Come down to Constraints and find Path Constraint, which will immediately give you this kind of dotted line and allow you to choose your path, and that same way you have assigned it. You'll still have to come over to your Motion tab to adjust its settings, uh, but you can do that all you like. All right.